Okay, approaching the right hand side of the vehicle here to get in to get your RCM or relay control module, you'll need to get inside of this box. Save yourself a shock and disconnect the negative battery cable. If you take a look at this, you can see it's a little bit corroded too. Let's get going here. We'll need to unlock it. Open her up and what do we got inside? Look at that. The RCM is pretty much right next to the heat shield here. And to get it out of there, we need to pull it this direction. We'll need to unplug these things. Now, if you look here, I went ahead and labeled these things one, two, three, four, and five. Let me first state that the RCM is an integral part of your engine. Should you make any mistakes while working on your car, this is on you, and I cannot be held accountable. Okay, take a quick notice here of the part number in case you're needing to get a new one or a used one on eBay. It's A170 545. 0305. As my shop teacher once said, use the right tool for the job. I have here AAA card, Top Golf membership card, don't want to forget that, and Movie Magic. There you go. Take the time now to inspect the quality of the solder joint circled here in yellow. These all look pretty good, however if you see dark smoky looking solder, dark sharp component pins poking up, or exposed circuit pads, you will need to clean up these solder points. Inspecting the solder joints for the RCM, things are looking pretty good until we get to our number one position right here. You can see a little bit of arc burn. Now honestly, this isn't really bad enough to do this for, but because we're using this as an example, I'm going to go ahead and liquefy this. Nine times out of ten, you'll just need to tap the solder joint, liquefying the old solder, and add a little bit of rosin core acid-free solder to reapply the connection. Starting from left to right, we have the horn relay, traction control relay, engine control relay, the fuel pump relay, and the air pump relay. I have inspected all of these relays and all of their corresponding fuses. When you're having an electrical problem with the Crossfire, probably a good idea to check all of your fuses and inspect these relays. I'm having a problem with my air pump currently, and it just so happens that this relay is showing some ill effects on the inside of the switch. Taking a look at the relay for the air pump, you can see right down here at the very bottom this black colored discoloration. This is not uncommon to any of these RCM relays. What I believe has happened is the switch has been held closed to turn the air pump on at all times clean up this relay, we're going to have to get this spring off of here. Be very careful not to shoot this thing across the room because you're going to need it later. There we go. Set that off to the side. Let's get this copper lead out from underneath that tang right there. Let's push it out. Slightly, slightly toasted. Oh, but do you see that right back there? You may have a bad relay. Now this right here is what's known as emery cloth. You don't necessarily want to use sandpaper for this. You can get away with it, but emery cloth is better because it's going to do a finer polish than what you'll get with most sandpapers. More importantly. It's printed on cloth, so it's actually more rugged. Do not tell my wife that I am using her good sewing scissors for this. 
If you see along this bottom edge, you'll notice that there is some built up material there. Let's take that off of there first. So I've got the emery cloth folded over on top of itself and I am able to fit the cloth down by itself down into the connection area. You guys see that? Doing the best I can do. Go ahead and clean up surrounding areas here too. While I burnish these connections, let me take a moment to explain relays. A relay is an electronic switch. The switch is thrown by a condition met by the engine, say from an ECU or in this case the emission system. If there is too little power being pulled, you can get arc burn, which is the discoloration, or too much power being drawn, you get slag, creating an uneven jagged connection where one pad is at a low level slowly spot welding itself to the other. Pretty dark down in there. Using the emery cloth, you really want to polish the connections as brightly as you possibly can. Any residue left over can inhibit the flow of electricity through the switch. Quite a bit better. Oh, look at the back of that right there. Wow. Yes, that. Look at that, you can see, oh yeah, that's a big piece of solder right there, I was right. This thing, this thing was closed. Yeah. That secondary air pump is probably toast. Just heed this as a warning to any of you guys that are buying a Crossfire used. Get in there and clean your RCM up first thing. Just get in there, start cleaning up these, these relays. I'm not even sure if this thing's going to be able to make contact now. That was quite a bit of buildup. I feel like a dentist here cleaning plaque off of somebody's teeth. There we go. Time to put this thing back in if I can here. Stuff. This needs to come up and over. There we go. And this slides into place here. We're going to have to torque it up a little bit there. There we go. Hope you were able to see that. Basically, I slid the uh, the copper end here in first. You got to pull this wire up and over everything, and then you can bring it back down over the top of our. I guess I would call that a hinge point. You don't want to rough up that wire too badly. Oh yeah, this moves a lot freer now. You, you guys see that? Wasn't doing that before. Part of it right there. Please consider swapping springs with a less used spring like that on the horn, as this spring has clearly been worn out as the relay was damaged. There we go. Now we just pop this back into place. Back at the car now. This makes it real easy to reinstall these things. We got number five going to number five. If after the rebuild, you find that the relay is too far gone, you can buy a 40 amp American Zettler relay for replacement. Thanks for watching my video today on the RCM. 
I want to break from my normal appeal for you to subscribe to my page and actually ask you to go back and watch the video again. This is going to do two things. The first thing is I want you to really know this backwards and forwards before you attempt to do this yourself and you are capable to do this yourself. The next thing it will do is help move the video up. There's a lot of RCM videos out there that explain the problems that are associated with the device but not all of them do a step-by-step. -step. Actually, none of them do a step-by-step. -step. So I'm hoping to get this moved up in that stack of videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.